Okay, in today's video, we're having a look at a rotator that I just got a hold of. Uh, this is a military rotator. Um, it's a winter, as we come down here. A winter EL275. It's made by Hans Hennings, I presume, and VDI and all this across here. Um, it's just the dial preset version. Come back a bit. Dial preset, and then you press start to go has on off it's 24 volts DC input because it obviously would have been in a transporter um, to run off um, DC power supply here's the actual um, power lead for it and we've also got here these are the uh, leads to go from here from the, from the actual rotator controller up to this distribution box um, in this there's a whole lot of filters and lightning what looks like lightning arrestors and stuff um, so you plug it in there, it looks like you can probably put a, um, a long wire into this section possibly and then feed it out through the spare hole here. Nice big military style plug. Look at that, huge. But this is uh, panning across here. Oh, we pan down here a bit. It's a deep thing. It's not very large. I'm not going to pull the back of it off. Um, but yeah, it's, it's the cables and everything. So yeah. Um, so what this is what I'm basically want to be, I want you to look at. This is the actual rotator. Um, this rotator um, weighs in a quarter, around about 50 kilos. And basically, when I come down underneath, I might grab my torch here to put a bit more light on the subject. So, this is the bottom of it. As you see up there, it's upside down, of course, winter. Might look like the other side. Um, yeah, put a plug just here. The base section which is just bolted on with just massive bolts the shaft here i had to put it in my vice to hold the darn thing it's so darn heavy so and there's actually pins in here to help locate when you put on this this bottom section is fixed by these big flange here and you just drop your your fixing point or foot or whatever into here into this section here and it locates the two pins on each side so what I'm doing now is I'm going to um, remove, I'll turn this noisy torch off, I'm going to remove the actual the housing to check out what, what the inside is, what, what it's like inside. So what I've found so far is you've got, you've got one, two, three, four and five um, mounting bolts and what you do is you remove them out and there's three extraction points. You put them into here, put the vulture just pulled out into three screw holes, which I've already done that in pre preparation. It just flared the light out big time. I was looking one in the cat and the right light. So there's one there and one over there. So I'm just about to pop this for the first time. Uh, but first off, we have to remove the locator pins for the top. Oh, first off, there is a um, Allen key at the back here. We can't see it. I've already loosened it. So I'll remove that. Put them in the tray, and there's the other two screws that I removed. You know, they're only stainless steel M6s, nothing special. Um, so basically, we've got to pull these out. Of, I found that these, I thought it was going all the way through, but they're actually just little pins. Uh, these, I believe, are stainless steel or some really good steel of some sort because it hasn't rusted. So, yeah. So now this just lifts up and comes off. And just to show you how heavy this thing is, I brought my scales over. As you can see here, my scales, if you can read the scales, I'll get the light in the right direction. Focus, that's on zero rough, roughly here. This is just this section alone. So this looks like it's about two, just over two kilos, just on two kilos. So that's pretty heavy. And I believe everything is pretty heavy. This whole thing, you know, as I said before, weighs about 50 kilos. So we've got a nice big seal in here on the shaft. There's that hole. There's a hole going all the way through, which is for a locking bolt, and there's the two holes for those there, the pins. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to try and work one-handed. I'm going to see if I can pop this by just doing this. Oh, anyway, that moved up already. Already pretty good. So I'll see if I'm, not, I'm not actually looking at what I'm doing here. So I'll go over here. There's one over here. So we'll bring it up a bit. Oh, it's a bit tighter, this one. Come around the other side over here. See if we can get this one to go as well. There's a bit of a gap there now, so 
So we'll just this, this, this would probably be pretty hard to get off if you didn't have this uh, these bolts screws coming through here. I presume there is a big seal on this inside of probably an O-ring or something. Oh, no, I forgot to do. I said I removed all the buddy screws and I didn't. I wonder why this side wasn't coming up. Oh, it's a bit of a slacko. Do, doing what I said I did. So there's obviously six screws, not five. So there's actually six screws and three screws get used for removing the top housing. Alright, now we've got three in there and we have three in here. Now this might, oh they are just coming up now, there you go. And I wonder why this one was tight. So. Oh yeah, look that's coming up really well. Okay, do this one up. And we've got a bit of a gap happening there. And the last one here. This will be a surprise. Let's see what it likes, looks like inside. Okay, I acquired this from a uh, from a, cust a potential customer, so I'm going to sit you on the ladder while I remove this because I would dare say this is going to be pretty heavy, and then I'll pick it up, I'll put it on the scales, and I'll take you over to the scales. I just leave it sitting there for a sec. Let's see if I can get this off. Maybe a couple of screwdrivers to help me lift a bit more. There we go. Oh yeah. Happy. Oh, there we go. Yep. Right here. Okie dokie. Bring you back over here again. This is the top housing, and I'll just move that around there. So, again, this top housing weighs nearly. Yeah, pretty close to three kilos. This is just this housing, so it's hollow, pull it out, heavy aluminium. It's got a big seal on the top here. So I'm just gonna set that aside with the rest of the stuff over there. We'll take a bit of a peruse around this thing. Oh, that's interesting. It's got a capacitor here. Hmm. It's a, it's a DC rotator. It's got a capacitor. What is it? Uh, 0.2 microfarads. It says something here, 2 by 0 0.027 microfarads. Interesting. I dare say this must be a filter. It looks like there's some coil filters in there. So I reckon this is probably a bipolar um, capacitor. Just to help the motor starting. I'll move this, this ladder out of the road now. Hmm. Yeah. That's a bit of a problem. I thought I heard something moving when I was moving it around because this was actually upside down. Um, oh, oh, look, the, uh, oh, it's actually snapped the bolt off. Yeah. I better salvage that before it. Uh, you know, just to hear things, I mean, there might be something floating around in here, so I'll put them in with the rest of the stuff. Is the other side attached? The other side is. Yeah, it's in the hole, but I think the hole might be stripped. Okie dokie. Oh, this they've got, got little sleeve spaces. Okay, so this is a motor here. I wonder if this comes off. Oh yeah, got oh, some little hooks. Okay, I wonder if it's on this side. I'm gonna pop this off somehow. Hmm. Might just leave that with the uh, little screwdriver. Let's have a little bow peepy in there. There we go. Little plastic housing here. Yep, this is the motor. So I'll just push this back. Well, it helps that because that gets out of the road. Okay. There's the motor. The motor sits at a little bit of an angle just here. Obviously, it's a, a motor and gearbox arrangement. I'll get up here. We have two two gears here. We have the worm. Like a worm drive gear here, and back over here looks like we've got a massive, big. What is that? Looks like bronze. Bronze uh, worm wheel. Wow. Okay. So that's a worm drive, and uh, well, this looks like the potentiometer. Look at the size of that. 
this thing must have about 20 or 30 turns in it. Let's look at the length of it. That's the full length of the potentiometer. So it's obviously a multi-wound wire wind version. Looks like we have a the potentiometer like a drive wheel coming off the shaft. Nice big bearing. Yep, that looks okay. Yep, I've got pressure me. So potentiometer, so it's wire wound it right up and down in here. That's the drive gear. I dare say these things must be the limit switches. Oh, there's one on the top one here. And might get me torch out again. Shine it down inside here. There must be one down in, in, on the bottom of the, of, the, of the wheel. Yeah, there's no one down underneath the bottom of the wheel. The worm wheel. Okay, right -o, So, So we have one down there on the worm wheel. And, oh, this is a dyad matrix, so there's dyads going into this very complicated looking little PC board. Let's just lift him up. Oh yeah, PC board. When I first powered this up, it was, it was having some problems. It would start sometimes, when it come around to the, to the limits, it would, wouldn't switch back over to the other side. So I thought, okay, well, so I'll go back over to the controller. So I found that the controller itself wouldn't align, and this is where it stopped, but it was stopped at south on the on what they classify as the minus side. And this is, these are adjusters here, if you can see them. And, they got, and, and I tried adjusting this and trying to get it to work, but it's, it's, it would work and then it wouldn't work, and it wouldn't align with what, the potential, what your dial preset was doing here. This is the interesting part. You can turn the inner dial of your preset right around obviously to orientate your, your car because it's obviously been, be, would have been in vehicle mounted being 24 volts um, DC um, well it wouldn't have been a car it would have been a big truck and would have been rotating an antenna or something or portable or whatever so it was for it was a portable use anyway so this you can see the bolts in here this would have, like, would have been like a rack unit would have dropped in to something so yeah so we have this uh, um, it just wasn't aligning properly, and it wouldn't. So that's why I decided to um, to strip it down and have a bit of a look at it, um, and then finding loose things everywhere. That doesn't help. Oh, and you've got some terminals coming out of the back of the uh, the gearbox here. Okay, righty yaddy. <laughs> so yeah, it's all beefed up and heavy as. I mean, I should get my verniers. I'll show you the. Uh, the diameter of this this tube here is zeroed, so it's basically get back there. It's 60 mil, basically 60 mil. And the other one down here, this one down here, is 80 mil. The bottom one, oh, I have to believe when I say this. The bottom one's another 60 mil. So okay. And while I've got here, I just this this fell off earlier on too. It's a little plaque. Whether we can get in and sit without too much reflection, uh, I don't think it's going to like it. It's a little plaque that fell off the bottom. Basically, it says you know what it was and had a rotator and whatnot. So yeah, it might be just there's too much light, or I'm getting too much reflection because this chromed or aluminium, I should say. That might be better there. Just maybe not. Okay, that doesn't matter. So yeah, it's, so it's a worm drive, military rotator. It's got a funny smell to it too as well. I think the grease is a bit, a bit icky. Nice seeing this. Oh, that's interesting. Ooh, check that out. There's a crack. Wow, there's a crack in this, in the back of the um. The the, the commutator or the bit that actually holds the it's not the actual bit that holds the brushes oh it looks like there's a little screw in the, in the middle it must actually keep force on the actual motor I never guess the motor might now be moving back and forth oh yeah the motor's been moving back and forth and it's broken it might have been dropped or something the motor went maybe it got dropped or something at some stage and the motor's flowing back and it's actually snapped this. The magnet should keep it within the field because as you can see here the, the, 
that part of it is not actually in the middle of the actual the magnets. This is these are actually magnets of sorts, uh, metalized magnets. Yeah, so this, it, would, it would probably keep it there once it started spinning. But that's also I've got something to try and fix there. Try and fix that. Okay. So there, there's the back of the plug. So basically, 24 volts DC. And something else I've got to fix too. Oh yeah, look at that. Snap that one right off there. Oh, there's another hole here. Someone has actually... Oh, it's broken up. It's broken off in the already. That's not very deep, that hole. And this one must be just stripped down. But nice big bracket they've made here. For the potential one. Oh, um, that's a uh, bit of a quick run through. And you can see how far the bolts have come through. These little bolts have come through. This one here. I better remove those. So I don't lose them. Other ones to get it off with, and to lock the, the two housings together. But yeah, uh, the, the whole thing. Yeah, that one there's pretty tight. And you can see this massive. Well, there's probably a better picture of the actual the uh, the worm wheel. Bronze by the looks of it. Cast bronze. The worm gear itself looks like it's steel. Get this other one out over here while I'm thinking about it. So, yeah, so there we have it. So, it'd be interesting, those this center shaft here um, again, that's I think that's stainless as well, or some special secret metal who knows, being military. But it's the weight of the uh, of that sleeve feels to me like stainless steel, it's that heavy. So, yeah, oh, um. I'm going to delve, drive in and look at dive in, not drive in, dive in and find out if we've got a faulty uh, limit switch, either one of these, um, and see what is happening because I think one is faulty, um, which is interesting because um, it, it might be just dirty contacts from from carbon build up or something. So yeah, oh, there's a little bit of grease come back from the actual bearing. The bearing feels okay though. So I wouldn't want to try and pull that off. I haven't got a press to pull that off. Jeez. Yeah, actually, it's interesting. The actual this disc is really close, and is actually rubbing. It actually rubs on the worm gear, which will pull all the grease off it, and put it when you go in one direction. If you're going going to top over this way, the grease will be forced on the bottom of this plate. When you go there, all the grease is you can see where it's been piling on. Onto the top of the, um, and we'll call it the um, the potentiometer gear. Yeah. So that's all shiny here. As you can see, it's shiny, and then that's dark. It's been sh scraping. I'm just wondering if the actual there's a lip there. I'm just wonder if this thing's in upside down. And it's running. This, it is actually. Yeah, I reckon it's touching. If it's not touching, it must be damn close, and it's actually scraping all the all the grease off, which won't be good for the. Hmm. Okay, those little things I see all the time. Okay, dokey. Well, I think I'll leave it there. One nice peruse around. We'll come back over here. Get my torch out of here. That's not part of this. So, look at this little the controller for it. So yeah, there we go. I'm going to take one more pan across there. And a little pan onto this. And um, there you go. Um, a bit of a look at the internals of a military rotator. Thank you, guys. Or people. Everybody. I'll catch you next video. Bye.